Hey everyone, um, in this video we will be looking at defining intensive and extensive properties, giving examples of each and showing how these properties will appear throughout thermodynamics. So to recap, a property in a thermodynamic system refers to a microscopic element of said system. So these properties can be further separated into two classes, intensive properties and extensive properties. Intensive properties are physical quantities that do not depend on the amount of substance for which it is measured, whereas extensive properties are physical quantities that depend on the, on the amount of the substance. So to illustrate what I am saying over here, let me take an example of mass and temperature. Both are properties of a thermodynamic system. The mass is the amount of fluid within the system, whereas the temperature is a measure to the energy within particles of a system. So let us say we have a jar over here, and uh, it's going to have a mass of 10 kilograms and a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. So now if we cut this uh, jar of whatever this fluid is in half, then let's say that, and we pour it into another jar, let's say it's over here, and then what will be the mass and the temperature now? Since it's being halved, the mass itself has now changed to 5 kilograms. However, the temperature is still going to be 50 degrees Celsius. Thus, mass is the example of an extensive property and temperature is the example of an intensive property. So let us look at the key properties we'll be discussing. We have our volume. Volume is a measure of three-dimensional occupation of a substance and it is measured in meters cubed. Furthermore, it is um, going to be, as a result of this, it's going to be an extensive property by definition. Pressure. Pressure is the ratio of force distributed over a given area. It is measured in SI units in pascals. However, in thermodynamics, uh, we will be using kilopascals as it will be more common due to the higher pressures involved. And this is going to be an intensive property by definition. Temperature is the measure of energy within the particles of a system, as we uh, just said before. It is going to be measured in... Um, in equations, it's going to be measured in Kelvin. However, sometimes it is given in degrees Celsius in um, different uh, sets of data. The way we can um, relate the two is that to change from degrees Celsius into Kelvin, we just have to do degrees Celsius to Kelvin. We just have to add 273.15 to um, get the uh, temperature in Kelvin when we have it in degrees Celsius. And obviously, to do it from Kelvin to degrees Celsius, we just subtract 273.15 from the, um, from the, from the uh, temperature. Next, we have the internal energy, which is the total energy within a thermodynamic system. This is measured in joules for SI units. However, just like for the case in pressure, this is typically going to be in kilojoules due to the large amounts of energy that we are going to be working with. This is going to be an extensive property. Our mass, which we already looked at, this is the amount of fluid within a system. This is going to be in kilograms and is intensive. Sorry, extensive. And uh, finally, we have uh, velocity, which is the rate of change of distance with respect to time. This is uh, typically given in uh, meters per second, and it's going, it's going to be an intensive property. So there are other properties of interest to us, uh, but we will introduce them as we go along. So in our thermodynamics, we will be working very much with our intensive properties. This is because the data for intensive properties is universal. So, for example, if we want to find the data of volume 
of water if it's at pressure 100 kilopascals and temperature 100 degrees Celsius, then naturally the mass of the water will have an effect on the volume. However, if I am looking for this volume in a book, how will they know the mass that I am working with? The mass could be as uh, tiny as 1 gram or as large as like 10 tons. So rather the book will provide this volume quantity by converting the extensive property into an intensive one. The way we uh, convert the in extensive property to intensive properties is through a method that or we make it into what we call um, specifics. So borrowing mass for obvious reasons, we will be quantifying extensive properties in terms of uh, per kilogram as a manner of making the property intensive. So for specific volume, so we use the uh, we prefix the word with specific. So for specific volume, instead of having a, in um, uh, volume to be in meters cubed, it is now going to be volume in terms of meters cubed per kilogram. For internal energy, for example, internal energy is denoted by the letter u so instead of it being in joules it will or kilojoules it will be now in kilojoules per kilogram to denote the specific volume and specific um, uh, energy and so on and so forth we have to change this uh, obviously if we leave it in terms of this symbol we can confuse people in terms of uh, if it's in specifics or not so rather what we need to do is we need to change the uppercase letter into a lowercase letter so, so specific volume will actually be a lowercase v in terms of meters cubed per kilogram and the internal energy will be actually smaller case u in kilojoules per kilogram. Naturally since uh, it is in terms of per kilogram to get the total value of this property so the capital V or the capital U we just have to multiply them by a mass of the, by the mass of the system. This simple method of changing the extensive properties to intensive pro ones makes our life much simpler, especially in analyzing a host of our processes. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit spoonfeedme.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.